An air burst is always announced by a brilliant flash of light, many times brighter than the sun, which dies out gradually with the formation of a large ball of fire. The fireball is shown here in various stages of its growth from a time of less than one hundredth of a second to about one tenth of a second when it has nearly reached a diameter of three hundred yards. The temperature, which is in the neighborhood of a million degrees at first, then drops rapidly to about two thousand degrees one hundredth of a second later. At this point, it starts rising again and reaches a second maximum of about seven thousand degrees then cools gradually until all the heat is dissipated. It is during this rise in temperature that the bomb does its thermal damage. The rapidly expanding fireball creates a shock wave in the air, which moves out in all directions from the point of detonation. This shock wave consists of a positive pressure phase in which the air pressure rises sharply to a peak, which may be several times atmospheric, then drops rapidly but more gradually to atmospheric, and the negative phase, where the air pressure drops below atmospheric. The negative phase is about three times the duration of the positive phase, but much less in magnitude. When the shock wave strikes the surface of the water, it is reflected back. This reflected wave is not as strong as the original wave, as some of the energy is transmitted into the water. As far as degree of curvature is concerned, however, it is identical to the original wave. As the incident wave moves outward over the water, the reflected wave merges with it to form a super shock front, which may be several times as strong as the incident wave in free air. As the shock front moves out with the negative pressure phase close behind, a condensation cloud may be formed. This is caused by the rapid cooling of the air due to the expansion during the negative phase. If the relative humidity is high enough, the cooling of the air may cause the precipitation of small drops of water forming a dense cloud or fog. When the negative phase has passed and the air restored to its normal pressure and temperature, the cloud quickly dissipates. The fireball, being a mass of extremely hot gases, is very buoyant and within a few seconds starts rising at a speed of several hundred feet per second. A rising column of air is formed under it and continues for several minutes after the blast. As the fireball rises, it cools rapidly, forming the familiar mushroom cloud. As nearly all the fission products of the bomb are contained within this cloud, it is highly radioactive. However, due to its upward movement, as far as personnel on the surface are concerned, the nuclear radiation does not last much more than a minute after the burst. The atomic cloud continues its upward rise much like a billowing thunderstorm. It may go as high as 50,000 to 60,000 feet depending on atmospheric conditions. At this altitude, a distinctive ice cap may form caused by condensation and immediate freezing of the moisture in the air brought up from lower altitudes. After reaching its maximum altitude, the cloud quickly loses its characteristic shape as it is affected by winds which may be of different force and direction. It retains one characteristic though, its radiation. Although harmless by now, the cloud may be detected with instruments weeks later, thousands of miles away.